Hello and welcome to the Stateside Soccer Show. My name is Jordan. With me, as always, is Logan. How are you, Logan? This is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I am in person. I am in Baltimore. This is not, uh, this is a really good edit that we've done here. <laughs> yeah, could you imagine if this was an edit, like this green screen behind us? Where... No, yeah, Logan came up for uh, RSL versus uh, Philadelphia Union, first time at Subaru Park. Yeah. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Be a little bit of a different episode, I think, with us being here in person uh, together. But, you know, we'll talk the matches. Um, we had a, obviously, we were both at the 730 match. So those other matches were, were pretty much going off of stats and MLS wrap up. <laughs> you know, uh, we did not have the 20 hours it would take for us to probably watch every single game uh, in between then. So. There you go. We figured, I was thinking we originally would just do our normal Monday show, but mm. Sunday was no games. And I was like, this would actually be a lot of fun to try a, a different setup here. So excuse us if this is not uh, something that you want to see going forward. You won't have to worry about that, <laughs> really. <laughs> I was going to fly up every, I don't know. Every, every year? Week, yeah, every week. Every week <laughs> I fly up on a, on a Monday. and then We go to season. a random 730 game. Right. Um. Yeah, but I mean, how how was your trip overall here? What's your thoughts on Maryland? Yeah, I was gonna say I've been here. I was here for your birth or your birthday, my your wedding, my yeah, wedding. I was here yes. for your wedding, um, and didn't really get to see a whole lot. Um, I know when we were coming up here, it was like I remember checking to see if any of the teams were playing, but it was yeah. it was middle of, so it was not uh, it was not conducive to obviously going to see games. So I came up. I was you know we'd planned this trip. We were trying to plan something similar to this last year, and then. I don't think, I think maybe like the last two years, right? I've just so. been like, hey, why don't you come up here for a Philly game? And we'd try to go to like DC or so because it was before the Apple deal. And we were thinking we could maybe hit up like if DC played on like a, a Friday mm-hmm. and Philly played on a Saturday or Saturday yeah. and a Sunday or something vice versa. But once the Apple deal happened, it, it became more of a games are on Saturday. Yeah. Unless yeah. the the unusual Sunday game. Yep. Yeah. No, I think, but coming up here, I mean, going to Subaru, it was, it was, it was almost surreal. Like you watch these, I think that's the way it feels on a lot of the stadiums is it feels surreal until you're in the actual stadium itself. But mm. I mean, just driving up to the park, which is interesting because it's in a, it's in a different kind of area than, <laughs> than maybe Orlando is. Logan's first experience in Chester. <laughs> yeah. Um, a little bit of a different experience going through all the factories and um, kind of like a port area, uh, which was really interesting to see how they set the, the stadium up. But Overall, I mean, I was really impressed with Super. The the atmosphere was electric. We were looking at, I think it was twenty five five um, as far as attendance for Orlando, and it was seventeen something. It's about like eighteen thousand for the Philly. Yeah. Philly, but the atmosphere was more electric than we get typically in Orlando. Um, our Orlando ticket sales are not as always as good, and you know, you know we get a lot of uh, I think visitors and travelers and people that are not uh, locals. So there's a lot of interesting mix between. Um, fans and people that just want to watch soccer. Well, yeah, because that shocked you, right? Trying to find the tickets. Like mm-hmm. we, we yep. bought these tickets way earlier than you make decisions oh, yeah. to go to a to an Orlando game because right. yeah. the tickets were were gone. Yeah, like so we're going. I think we're going to go May fourth, which is next Saturday, um, to mm-hmm. Orlando, and I'll probably buy tickets midweek, like Wednesday. Right. If I waited that long here, we would have. I don't know where we would have sat. <laughs> yeah, so there was very little seats left a few weeks ago when we got these when we got these tickets. And I, you know, like there's accounts that I follow that are union fans that like track that stuff, you know, yeah. and they'll be like, "Oh, there's four seats left in the River End. There's, you know, yep. this many seats left somewhere else." And they'll do a thing they call Ticket Watch where they just check tickets uh throughout the stadium. And uh pretty, you know, pretty good selling team since we've I, I don't know, like since we've been consistently good, yeah, you know, yeah. the the progress we've seen in the playoffs up until MLS Cup last year getting bounced by Cincy, but like the fans were always, uh, you know, s- showing up in those games. Yeah, no, it was a good atmosphere though. It was. Not you, got result, see, but... <laughs> no, you got to see. You got to see the dupe. I did. Get you to got see to dupe. see the dupe though. Yeah, uh, we were. I was. Uh, we were playing what well, we were playing uh, FC twenty four. Yeah, uh, and they added here. that in there. Yeah, and they were doing it. And I was like, I hope I get to see this. We we're you know 
obviously we're hoping. Well, it's, background, <laughs> I, I was playing against Logan yes. as Philly, yeah. and I was scoring like five or six right. goals, and he was getting tired of the song. But <laughs> So it's the first song. The first time he heard it, he was like, oh, this is great. I hope I get to see this in person. Yeah. The sixth time it goes into the back of the net, uh, he's a little aggravated. Yeah, no, yeah. But no, overall, I mean, if you're if you're in the area and you're you're in Philly or you're um, coming in for any reason, definitely check out Subaru. It was a it was really cool because it's an older stadium, obviously, than Inter Interco, which is now what Orlando City is. So that's my home stadium. But only by like five years. Yeah, that's wild though. Like the the amount of tech and stuff that's been. I mean, and Orlando City's always adding new stuff every year. I don't know how far as far as the union are no. adding stuff, but um, seems like every like we just got a new video screen, which is odd because it's not been around that long so oh, i think we've got a new video screen yeah. at some point i think it used to be smaller i did look back at like the tail and energy stadium days because yeah. that that was in ppl park when it was those stadiums i think we had a smaller screen um but yeah so rsl won two to one uh a frustrating game for the union yeah i would say uh outplaying rsl while you're at home that's a game Union would usually win, but I, I would say even a draw. Mm-hmm. And it was headed towards a, a draw. But really, that that goal, the first goal by Gomez, who was the best player for RSL on the night, he was everywhere. Um, Blake should have had that. Yeah. And, and that's, uh, you know, Blake was asked about that after game, you know, about how he's doing, because he was just coming back from injury. Some Some fans thought maybe they rushed him back, but... I didn't think he looked super off the whole game or anything. It was really just like that one play. And then and I've seen some people say maybe he was like stretching oddly after some saves and stuff. So maybe there's a little bit of lingering stuff there. Some people think he's just getting old at this point. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But um, yeah, usually a game I think the Union would either win or draw. And it took a, a really good second half strike mm-hmm. uh, at the death for RSL to win that game. And now top of the West. Yeah. I think too, as far as like Blake, uh, it was cold. <laughs> it was, uh, it was, it was chilly as a, uh, you know, and people up in the North were probably like, it's not that cold. It was only 50. And he's from Jamaica. Uh, so I yeah. mean, that's further South than you. I was going to say like stretching and stuff like that. I feel like that's something that you got to do anyway. You got to stay warm yeah. and goal because you don't want to re-injure anything. So even that, like I could totally see him trying to stay loose. Cause I mean, just think about that as a keeper. You're you're just stationary for so long. Yeah. Unless you're keeping yourself occupied. So. And they didn't have a, that many chances. No. First half. I mean, seriously, like I said, first half the union dominated possession. Like it felt like the union. I had think it the was ball. like 53, 47 yeah. or something. Yeah. Like the first, and then I think at the end of the game it was 50 50 dead so on. Yeah. The, the RSL controlled it completely in the second half. It seemed. But Union um, had better shooting chances in the did. second half. Like Union's first half, they had more possession, but like yeah. their chances were like half chances. They, yeah. they weren't like anything. Um, they they couldn't get it going in the final third, and then they missed two sitters in the in mm-hmm. the second half. RSL, you know, got lucky with the with the first goal with the weird. If you haven't seen it, it's like Blake blocks it, but then it just jumps up and like really high yeah. up and over him. And he's not able to get there in, in, in time to make the second save. The The second goal he was never getting to, so no fault mm-hmm. there at all. Um, just probably needing a better clearance uh, from, from Glesnez. Or, I mean, he heads it right right to him, but it's also like a far header that, that reaches. Um, forget where I was going with this. Uh, but mainly what I was trying to say is uh, Union had better... Goal chances in the second half, even though they had less possession. And, uh, you know, RSL had uh, a, a few chances that looked, you know, we were in weird seats too. We're, we're on the right. end line. So sometimes it's hard to tell depth. Like, there were some chances I thought were maybe a little closer mm-hmm. that if you watch on the, on the TV might have been a little wider. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think so. And, I mean, but there were some that were like God's dog had a couple and even on our, on our, on our end where I think there's a couple of them that he would put in our way normally where, he, yeah. you know, I think there's, there's balls that he missed wide left, wide, right, which I mean, ultimately I think, you know, that, that just happens in the, in the flow of the game, but they lose their first game. And honestly, I mean, they, they, they did, it was two to one, but I, I thought the union looked 
the better team. It was kind of a chaotic game, too. It like was. You and I were talking about that. But there was no flow to it. 35 fouls, I think yeah. I read. And it was like... Five nine. yellow cards for RSL. And and three or four for the Union. Yeah. So you have like about nine yellow cards. I thought the ref was actually pretty, pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the issue, I think, was... It felt like he was letting a lot more go in the first half. Yeah. Then you had like the brawl yeah. in the yeah. second half right. when yeah. Chicho uh, gets uh, like down in the box, I guess trying to get a call, um, and Bedoya and him are starting to go at it, and then everybody's swarming each other. Yeah. And then I felt like after that, he felt like he needed to call every single foul yeah. because he was worried it was going to spill over. Um, probably because he was letting it go in the, in the first mm-hmm. half, but I think overall he got like stuff right. Like I don't I don't think there was anything that I was like, oh, that's egregious. That's mm-hmm. uh, why is that a call? Because I saw some people complaining about about the ref, but uh, maybe just more about how he handled the flow of the game because there was no flow of right. flow of the game. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, like you said, it was like a it was let him play because I mean these are two top teams. It was a very much let him play in the first half and. And the second half, they t- tightened the screw a little bit after it got chippy. Because the whole game was chippy. I mean, yeah. every corner, it seemed, uh, Gazdag, and I think it was Gomez that was in, uh, I forget who it was with him, um, that was that were marking him on corners. And it was constantly the ref. Oh, yeah, having running, to come right, over stop. and be like, yeah, right, stop, stop that. No, yeah. it was, uh, uh, let, let me double check who it was. It was like number 98, right? Yeah. I forget exactly who um, it was. Yeah, so that was, that was frustrating. Yeah. Uh, just the the stop and go like Mm -hmm. it really and then also like when the ball was in play it felt chaotic like yes sprinting losing the ball passing it a lot of passes over the top that didn't have any runners on the end of them yes or like uh especially on the union side where they where they're like mcglynn's making a pass where he thinks carranza is going to be running and carranza wasn't running uh there yeah the first half had one yellow card yeah I was going to say the second half. And it was Arango for the descent. Right. Remember? Because oh, yeah, uh, then yeah. he had to be careful. Yeah. And uh, there was a few times where I thought maybe he was lucky uh, not to get a second yellow just from the way he was arguing. Uh, nine, I think it was number 98 that they kept arguing with. Uh, yeah. So that was uh, Katranas, right? Uh, Katranas. Oh, yeah. Who scored. Right. But it was like he, he and uh, Gazdag were always like in each other's space and mm-hmm. like you said yeah the ref would have to keep like saying hey like and there was one time i looked over at the ref because he had just warned them he gets back to his spot and then they're <laughs> and back at it and he, he literally just had his hands <laughs> up like like what right i just fixed yeah. this um yeah but we can move on f- from this game but rsl uh went on the road top of the west now mm-hmm. as they are uh, I mean, they've played a lot of good teams. They are top of the West. I wouldn't be shocked if if they're a contender for yeah. one of those spots. Three wins on the road. They were road warriors last year. They, I mean, they've been really good. They've been impressive as far as just getting points. They they seem to just grind out wins. Um, like you said, I mean, when when Chicho's not really doing anything, it's it's um, it really is just a collective effort. It doesn't seem like there's a one, you know, there's one person that really is going to carry RSL. But they they seem to be really putting it together. Um, as far as a team effort, but there wasn't too much as far as anything that was overly impressive or that I would say make them heavy favorites, but definitely a good team in the West. All right, uh, let's talk about the early game that we got to see a little bit of mm-hmm. before we left. Austin, LA Galaxy. This was a shock, right? Yeah. I mean, maybe a shock <laughs> for us, but like people right. following Austin, you know, you've been they able to good. see them in their last five get like four wins, mm-hmm. right? But it was also they hadn't played the quality of opponent of, of, of the LA galaxy mm-hmm. yet. And uh, that was a shocker. Uh, Austin went up two nil in the first half. Yeah. Right. It was yeah. uh fairly early on 19 minutes in O'Brien had a goal and assist. Rubio scored the first one. Uh, Austin now sits like seventh in the, uh, in the West here. Um, so above the, MLS app has that as the playoff line, I guess, because the play in for eight and nine don't oh, technically yeah. consider yeah. playoffs, but they're, you know, now uh, in the full playoffs, I, I guess you would say. Um, and, and they're on the tail of teams like the Rapids, LAFC, both have 15 points uh, as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah, Austin, what do you think it is about them? Uh, everyone was woof out, and now they're probably a uh, woof in. 
or yeah. quiet at least on Twitter. <laughs> I was going to say um, definitely quieter. Uh, and again, we talked about this quite a bit is that the West this year seems the most open than it's been in a long time. And I think yeah. it's because LAFC are not, not there yet. Um, I think, and, and we knew that going in, we knew that going in, they were still looking for some pieces to add to the team. They're going to add Olivier Giroud um, in midsummer, yeah. end, end of summer, roughly. Um, so I, I think that's going to propel this team up. They, I think LAFC lack experience, LA galaxy. They don't defend Vancouver, they're just starting to prove themselves. So Austin feels like, you know, we've had this group together for quite some time. Austin's running out of team, Jordan. I think that probably has the most consistency as far as players besides Vancouver, as far as the core is concerned. So you got guys like Sebastian Jerusi. Um, you add in players like this. And, and, and I, I think when Sebastian's going well and, and he's playing a lot better than he had been, he's making more of a difference. I think there's, there's times where he's just disappeared. And, and last year, you know, he had that regression where it was, you know, he had been the MVP caliber player that he had been drops down. And, and ultimately it's like what Hani Mokhtar is doing in Asheville. Um, when you have regression from a, you know, a top player like that, um, it's really going to impact the team. But I think Wolves got them playing much better defensively. They used to ship goals left and right. They're playing a lot better defensively, I think, this year than they have. And, and last year, they struggled with a lot of center back depth issues. I think they fixed some of the depth issues. They've had some players return. So ultimately, I mean, I think it, it's Austin playing a lot better, but against a Western conference that I still would argue is the weaker of the conference as far as uh, conferences, as far as, I mean, Eastern Conference, you can run a one through five, one through six, and they're deep. Whereas the West, I don't feel like is are, are consistent. So, yeah, I mean, Austin's three points from being first place uh, in the West. They have 15 points. RSL leads with 18. LA Galaxy in second with 18. Uh, Vancouver with 17, but they have a game in hand. So if Vancouver mm-hmm. wins that game in hand, they're back to top of the right. West again. Uh, Minnesota uh, now back up to 17 uh, points. Yep. Um, yeah, which I think we can go ahead and I, I guess let's talk, let's stay with West and well, I guess this is partly East as well, but Vancouver, New York, Red Bull was one, one, uh, final score Vancouver on the road in Red Bull arena, not too far from where we were really <laughs> just a couple more yeah. hours, uh, up, um, uh, they had a little bit more rain than, than we had had. We had rain right. before the game, um. But yeah, New York Red Bulls, Lewis Morgan scores to equalize it. Brian White scored for Vancouver to take the lead early. And then we had the the fun red card from uh, uh, Ely, right? Um, where he uh, just swatted it down. With his, <laughs> with his hand. And then has the audacity to complain yeah. that he's getting sent off when it was very, very obvious what had happened. Yeah. Um, but not enough for Vancouver to go and try to uh, take the lead from there. So 1-1, one, one, Lewis Morgan left uh, unmarked at the back of the box. Yeah. Had a nice little header in- into there. Uh, but Brian White now has, like, the most goals in Vancouver history. That's wild. That, that, I mean, just thinking about yeah. that. It was like 70-some, yeah. right? Right. 70-some so goals now? Because, I mean, I, I mean, I you know, I start following the league in 2021. And since then, I mean, it's been Brian White. In yeah, Vancouver. I mean, it hasn't, you know, and I don't know what it's yeah, when like. Did, when before. did he leave Red Bull? Well, he was with Bradley. I mean, Bradley Wright Phillips, because we just watched wrap up. Bradley Wright Phillips and then played with Brian when he was with Red Bull. I didn't know he was oh, that old. Eight, 18 to 2021. Okay. So, like, literally, he had joined Vancouver yeah. in 2021. Okay. So, when we started, he was, because how old is he now? 28. That's wild. I always thought he was younger. I don't know why I thought maybe because I, I didn't, I I'm honestly, I had no idea he had played with Red Bull before he went to Vancouver. So it was all, was it all competitions that he had that? Cause they only have him as 33 goals in MLS, right? What were they showing that stat on wrap up with Brian White? I don't it had him that. above like, uh, a, a contributions other, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it was contributions as a yeah. whole. That's the only thing I could think of. He's got 30-something leagues. Team records. Uh, player records. Top goal scorers. Yeah, I don't know. He has 41 total on all comps. Yeah, maybe it was goal contributions. Maybe there was some assists. Is that all of Vancouver right there? 
Yeah, this is all Vancouver. Yeah, but they showed him above Camilo and something, and that's what I'm trying to figure out what what they were showing on maybe on there. I wonder if they don't consider um, Open Cup. Why don't you uh, go ahead and keep talking about okay. these teams, <laughs> and I yeah. will try <laughs> to find that still. Yeah. So uh, one thing that well, well, we were watching the wrap up and Illy like he he. He goes up with his hand and he gets that red card. And I was sitting there thinking, I'm going, what, you know, you're arguing this. And, and the reason why they, these players do this, they and and I know this from when I've played other sports where, or that I've seen other players do this, is that when they, when they typically argue something that is so blatantly obvious, they do it to try to protect themselves from the coach going, what are you doing? Like, why are you, <laughs> you're, you just made a ridiculous play. Um, the, the motion in which his hand goes up, he clearly just swats it. Almost like he didn't realize that the, the, the play was going to continue. I don't know. It was really strange. Um, I don't think I've ever seen it. It did stop a, a goal-scoring chance, um, one that was a breakaway that I'm pretty sure would have probably been put away. Um, but to go down a red man, or you know, the red man, to go down a, a, with a red card um, this early in the game, I mean, it, it just, I think it ends up being just crucial to the way that, you know, Red Bull want to play because if Red Bull go down a player, they can't press like they want. I was wrong. So it is goal leaders, all competitions, forty four. Okay, but it. Uh, I guess Wikipedia hasn't updated yet. Yeah, is what it is. But also, it's um, it's forty four. I, I I said seventy something. I don't know. I had the maybe the Diego Chara uh, number in my head. It was like three seventy seven, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, for him, so uh, that is. Correct it, but yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Maybe yeah, trying to protect himself a little bit from the from the fans yeah. and the and the coach of yeah. like I can't uh, believe they called yeah. that red card on me. I can't believe they did that. <laughs> Why do they have it out for me? Yeah, but no, Vancouver. Uh, look, that's a road point. They'll take that. They're still well in. They're one point behind RSL and LA yeah. Galaxy with a game in hand. So they have they have opportunities. They've been like the best team in the West. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how Vancouver does with that going forward. But, yeah, Minnesota is in fourth in the West, and uh, they had a game against Kansas City. And this was controversial, Peter Vermees with his iPad. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that. But uh, Boxall scoring two yeah. minutes in, uh, and then you had a goal in the 25th minute, and then Polito in the 38th, all the goals in the first half. Right. Um, but that that was it. There was a goal that it was the second goal, right? That was um, Vermees thought was was offsides. And again, mm-hmm. we're talking about angles. And, and Logan and I came up with just the easiest solution for this: just get a camera yeah. <laughs> that sits on each goal line, not like on the goal line, but like on a level. These cameras are at the half field point, and yep. they're turning to yep. get this, so the angle is off. We need better technology. We have the Apple deal. They they need to get that sorted out so that way there is. Um, so it's easier now. I know, like in other leagues, they don't have all those camera angles either. But like, come on, uh, if NFL has like the the pylon tech, just right. get a pylon and put it yeah. there. Yep. Go no, get I mean, one from Lincoln Field. I was gonna say, put yeah. it on there. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, it's not hard. And then, and then the other thing too is that I wonder is that they've got the technology to where they could have the they could have a camera that's censored to follow the the lead player like i feel like they have the the cap they have the technology to be able to uh, move a camera yeah, or have somebody yeah. operating a camera like they do with the one that goes up you know the, one the that drone above, that they have above yeah, or the sky cam the NFL, yeah, yes, sky cam, yeah. where it goes above people i mean there is this technology it is i mean i feel like england has a better camera view whenever i yeah, see their do. bar they've got a better it's like but you could even have camera a camera station at the top of the box, middle of the box, and into that yeah, goalie yeah. spot where it's like you could have somebody at least get a straight on view of this. Right. It, Especially it ones in the box. Yes. I, I, I'm fine with like offsides right. being more marginal yeah. in the half field point, right. right? Because it's like whatever. You're gonna you're trying to get a one on one there. But in the box, like it's tough. I think he was on side. It just the the Somebody did like a model of it on online and it's like uh, the ball, cause it's not from the player. It's from the ball. Right. So the, the, the guy is already at a certain point with the ball and he's level with the ball. We mm-hmm. think, 
from the way that people have done the math and all that. But we shouldn't have to do that. Any, anyway, even if it was marginally off, I think it's fine to stand it. I, I only want egregious offsides. Right. So for, for me, that's that's fine. Um, but yeah, so SKC lose. Uh, Vermees was very upset with that. He had the iPad. He had the picture that he thought shows that it is offside. And he held that up to the zoom. Yeah. <laughs> like it looks ridiculous. Like it looks like the kid. In People are going to edit that with this. different photos. It was like this. Okay. So I saw I, somebody did one, I think. Yeah. So like, I've got, I've got fun. I've got fun. I love. And he was like this, like to the zoom camera. Yeah. Like the press was asking him a question. He's like, look at this. Look at how <laughs> offside this is. All right. So, but so I've got, I don't think we've really talked much about it. Like, I think we've alluded to it, but how, how good can this Minnesota team be without Emmanuel Reynoso? I mean, this is this is a good win. I think, yeah, and he's right? trying to force his way out. We, right. We've heard that maybe summer he's going to yeah. be gone, but they're playing fine without him. Yeah. I think they'll be good without Reynoso. Uh, <laughs> actually, that was a slip of the tongue. I didn't actually I mean that say, one. Yeah. I actually <laughs> felt, it was Reynoso, yeah. um, is what I meant to say there. Mm-hmm. But um, it's tough. There, there's times where they look really good, and yeah. then there's times where. I feel like like they did not really look good when they played the Union. Right. Yep. Right? And uh, you see a team like RSL that came in and didn't really play well either, but they got the win. Right. Right? Like, they didn't even get the draw. Um, so it, it's tough because I feel like I would put, like, RSL and Vancouver and LA Galaxy mm-hmm. above them. But LA Galaxy just played, like, awful against Austin. Right. But Austin's on the rise, right? So, like, it's very tough with MLS, right? Yeah, it, it to really tell how... Like, it is like yeah. you're gonna get like Union will lose to RSL, yeah. uh, LA Galaxy is gonna lose to Austin every so often, right? That kind of stuff happens, uh, and it's and it's tough to tell what this will actually do going forward. Mm-hmm. But they have their coach. He was actually not happy with their shape. Uh, right. he, he said that he didn't want to make. He had to make some tactical changes, even though they won. Uh, he was not happy with the way that they were playing with their shape and stuff. So if he can get all that stuff sorted out, right. then I think they'll have a really good, really good shot. They're top four right now. Yeah. If they stay in the top four, you can't ask for much more better than that. You get a home playoff yeah. game. You are uh, like, you're set. Yeah. Right. Like that's much better than where they were when, uh, when um, uh, Heath was here. Yeah. So. And, and, and I think, I mean, people want to, People probably forget that. I mean, Cameron Knowles starts the season as the head coach. Eric Ramsey comes in and he's coaching. And it's, you know, it's an adjustment period. If you've been playing the same system, it's still an adjustment period to how the coach tactically sets up and how the coach manages, especially in in game management is so important in MLS. And you see so many different, like that. you and I talked about how different Jim Curtin's substitutions are than Oscar Pereja. Like before the 75th minute, it feels like Oscar Pereja has put in all of his subs by then. Whereas yesterday I was sitting there going, and I know you guys have a game Tuesday, but it was like, man, Jim really does rely so heavily on this core that he has. And it, you know, and I think that's, well, that's the frustrating thing. Tuesday yeah. we have a game. It's like that maybe some subs should have been made. Anyway, right. But, and then you take Sullivan out and then you lose, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it kind of yeah. goes each, each way there. Um, one thing I just wanted to point out with Minnesota and SKC, expected goals was almost exactly dead on. 2.01 expected goals for Minnesota, 1.02 for SKC. So I don't think you can be too hard done by the offside right. being yeah. missed. Right? I mean, it's just how it, how it shook out. But possession-wise, I mean, 41% possession for Minnesota, <laughs> 59 yeah. That, but possession is not a stat that we we like, Jordan. It doesn't tell you anything. How about <laughs> nine nine shots to eight shots? Five there shots on target to two on target there for SKC. Go. So even almost even on shots, right. but like the shots on goal even favor Minnesota. So I don't know. Vermees needs to figure it out. SKC has been in free fall mm-hmm. lately. Last year they started off slow. They they started off well, and now they're kind of in a little bit of a problem area right now is they sit 10th with 11 points only two wins three lo- uh three losses five draws so not good for them they're down there with the likes of portland yeah and they i mean they've they've spoiled games at home which i mean th- that's the other thing too right where you in sport you talk a lot about um, and this is this is part of why some of the teams are still not in form or are just now getting into form and making their runs. 
we're only uh, just barely under a third of the season. I mean, we're not even a third of the way a season in. Like, yeah, it's we're getting so, close. Yeah, like yeah, we're really there close. Um, there's some teams that have just hit their third mark, I think, and in 11, 12 matches. But it's like, you know, a lot of these teams are still nine, eight, nine, ten games into the season. So they're still trying to figure – like, that is really early in the season, yet it's really important you don't drop that many points early in the season. Mm-hmm. Like, you always hear teams talk about, well, if we'd have just played better in the beginning of the year. Then right, just, right. It's so tough to do. Like that is such a tough thing to ask, is to to have your full focus on those early stages in the season. I know because people will say that like with baseball, yeah. Be like, all well, the time. uh, you know, like uh, it, it's early, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's also like, well, if you miss it by one loss, you really you know, screwed up. They, in you screwed yeah. up in April. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how about Miami, Miami, New oh, England? Geez. So we're we're at the game, right? And not at Miami. not that not at the game. We're at the Philly game. <laughs> But, you know, they have the scoreboard up there, and I'm also checking my phone. That was a fun one to watch, yeah. And it was, like, within 40 <laughs> seconds, I get a text from my friend who's like, I'm watching Miami. They give up a goal 40 seconds into New England. I can't figure them out, right? And uh, Sean Kalai, really great goal, really too. Good. Uh, really one bad the positioning ones. from the goalkeeper, <laughs> yeah, right, I think, there. Drake awful. Callender was not <laughs> making a good play there. Right. But a good assist from Heal, and mm-hmm. then a great goal by Sean Kalai. And for 30 minutes, we're looking at that like, wow, New England. Finally. <laughs> at home in front of a huge crowd that's probably pro-Messi yes. is right. lose, uh, is winning uh, while Messi is losing. And then Messi takes over. Uh, Going to be my vote for player of the match day. He Mine gets in a, he gets a goal in the 32nd minute, gets a goal in the 68th minute, and then assists two in the 83rd and 89th minute. Uh there's two assists given on the Suarez goal, and that's Messi and Kramashi both getting assists there. But, yeah, so two assists, two goals. He contributed to all four goals, and they went crazy. Halftime 1-1, one, one, and you're like, okay, maybe they can get like a 2-1 victory. Mm-hmm. They said, no, we're going to get a 4-1 victory on the road in front of a huge crowd, the largest soccer crowd in – the largest MLS crowd in New England Gillette Stadium. Second largest soccer crowd yeah, in mixed, Gillette Stadium. Mixed in with three international games. You it, just yeah. passed the U.S. and Spain game that was there. I think it was the U.S. and Brazil or something. I mean, Brazil, Mexico was the highest. Brazil, Mexico yeah. was the highest. And then a U.S., Brazil, I think, was the third. And and then it slotted in right in the two spot. But, again, like you said, they, anytime they do this, just like an arrowhead, anytime they do this, it's a pro Messi crowd. That's why they're there. That's why they're in a football stadium. Um and people will continuously talk about it. they did it again on wrap up where it's like you know they, they've got to start making him uncomfortable. I'm like the only way you do that is the teams not wanting those ticket prices and those ticket sales. I mean that's that's like fifty thousand, sixty thousand more tickets sometimes that they're selling to be able to just host Messi. Like that is such a huge boost for a lot of these teams financially. I would say even some of them are not even like Messi fans. It's like just soccer fans in general. Soccer fans that say I want to see. The greatest of all time play in America, <laughs> and it's going to be probably a rich crowd because yes. they say I can afford that. Yeah, and, and it'll be like the casuals that right. show up, and they'll be wearing their USMNT kit while they're watching yes. that, or like yeah. an Argentinian kit, right? Like they're just going to to, to see the game. Um, I I would think more like you got to make them uncomfortable on the pitch, but the issue is right, like you can't. Like he is, he's been playing this yeah. game for so long, he. He's comfortable in the U, the Champions League in Europe. There's not right, much right. more comfortable I mean, he was than one that. Of, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or Real Madrid, he's playing on a night there. Like That's not comfortable for him. He's playing against Real Madrid in a hostile environment. And some of these balls, like this ball from um, Busquets to Messi oh, yeah. for the second goal, it shows Busquets' vision, right? Because mm-hmm. like if we were sitting almost field level, yeah. right, you cannot see that that is an open pass. Mm-hmm. Like... When we're watching the Philly game and RSL, there's times where they're making passes where I'm like, oh, wow, they, they have really good vision to make that ball. Mm-hmm. This is like elite level vision, of course, because it's Sergio Busquets. But right. like he puts this ball through like four guys yeah. and it just on the ground and it just gets through to <laughs> Messi, who's making a great run and he and he fires it in there right. like that. That's the difference between MLS level uh, of teams and um and, and like people that have played at Barcelona in the Champions League and have won Champions mm-hmm. League and they've had like Busquets and Messi have that relationship where they played forever. Right. And they know where each person's going to be. Same thing with that uh Suarez goal. Mm-hmm. Uh he like Suarez already looked at where he's going to put the ball and when he got it like 3 feet later, 
he already knew where he was putting it. He's just yep. like, boom, lifts it into the top corner. Right. And players that have played over there, I mean, you, you look at Christian, because people are like, man, Christian Benteke has been really good. But mm-hmm. again, he was a, he was oftentimes a sub at Crystal Palace. But it's just that awareness, that elite awareness where he's played enough internationally. He's played against the best players in the world, the best defenses in the world. Um, and especially in the Prem, like you, the, Benteke is playing in a time when when you have that Chelsea elite or that Liverpool elite yeah. defenses where, I mean, it's impossible to score on some of these teams uh, at times. I mean, City played well defensively a couple of years ago. Like, you're talking about these guys, like Messi plays in La Liga, who aren't really known for the defense, but play against Premier League sides in the Champions League. And, and he would still just, do it. And yeah. still absolutely un- unravel them. Um, and again, getting knocked down by a Sergio Ramos um, in uh, Camp Now or whatever it might be. I mean, that's, I don't think Messi's scared of going into anywhere of the U.S. and playing. It's now called like Spotify. Right. Yeah. But it was the new camp so, yeah. before. Right. Yeah. Uh, new England. They suck. They are <laughs> low on the totem pole, but um, I mean, look, you, you can't judge them too much against Inner Miami. But here's the thing: yeah. they got Chicago coming up. That's an opportunity to get some points. Uh, they got Red Bulls coming up, which is going to be tough. They got Philly coming up, which is going to be tough. They got NYCFC, who's on the rise. Then they go to then they go to Columbus, and then they go to Nashville. So that's June first. Yeah. I see maybe four points there I was at best. Say, yeah, I mean, right? The, like yeah. if they win against Chicago, which they're in Chicago, so that may they not fire play pretty well. They fire usually. been good. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe against Nashville, who've been struggling, like that. That's yeah. Yeah. the rest of these teams are very yeah. good. They're they're going to be. They have two home games in that span against Philly and NYCFC. I would say NYCFC might be there their best opportunity. As but they've as been good recently. That's true. That is true. I, I'm I mean, worried about New England. They're they're on a historic they're on a historic path. They've got four points, Jordan. Well listen to this. After <laughs> after the Nashville game, yeah. they go against Red Bull again, Vancouver, Cincinnati, Columbus, Atlanta. You're not getting any points. Seattle July sixth the is their next their yeah. next shot. The way they're playing that that <laughs> stretch of four, that might be the toughest schedule that MLS they have a, has they have a tough <laughs> schedule. It eases up a bit. They have Seattle, Orlando. Orlando sucks. <laughs> I'll go with that. And then they go Philly, Dallas before League's Cup starts. Yeah. That's brutal. Like, but again, they have a bad first half of the season. Right. That is awful. But again, like like we've talked about, the Eastern a lot of those are Eastern Conference names. The Eastern Conference is a gauntlet at this point. Yeah, like and then we, the Western Conference teams they're playing are the best in the yes, <laughs> Vancouver. The in, yes. They're gonna be facing Vancouver. Yeah. And then they'll face Seattle. Not, yeah. not the best, but but again, like you're talking about Cincinnati. You're talking about the crew. Like I would take, I would take right now the crew: Cincinnati, Philadelphia, Red Bull, and Miami, and put them up against any of the Western Conference teams, and yeah. they would they would probably be favorites. Probably, yeah. It, that's that's I don't know New England. If, if you're a New England fan, I'm sorry, but also if you're a New England fan, let us know. What your thoughts are so far? Should, like, is it a Porter issue? Because this team was good last year until Bruce or, until Bruce left, right? Like, is it the players not playing for him? Is it the players just not getting it done because of the Bruce stuff? Like, is this cloud still over? I thought when they hired Caleb Porter, like, okay, you got an established guy, the cloud pretty, should be lifted. Like, let's go. Yeah. And it seems like it's still kind of hanging over. Yeah, pretty good roster too. I mean. And, and again, you get a lot of that too, where it's really hard to fire a first year coach because they don't have their guys. Yeah, so there's no really... way you can fire him, right? Yeah. Like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, it's historically bad. Like, they are on a pace right now to be really. I mean, if if you go through that stretch like we've talked about, and you get four points, which is realistic, then you'd be at eight points after tw- what? What was that? Almost Ten like, games? Yeah, eight games? Something like that? Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, seriously, their their best shots are going to be against the Chicago Fire at Soldier, which Chicago are really good at drawing in Soldier at least. So I could see them getting a point there. NYCFC is really the only battle-tested team that they could try to get some points from where... Yeah, no, I don't... <sighs> this isn't... No. And, and then those, like, Orlando and Nashville games can go either way because, right. like, they're both at the bottom, too. Yeah. So, like, Orlando could be like, oh, we're playing the worst team. Like, we have to get points. Right. And to be fair to Orlando, they would have to get points against uh, against New England. Yes. Like, that that would be 
DEFCON 1 for yeah. Oscar yeah. Perea. Yeah. That's that the game they circle and go, that's the game we got to get. That's that's insane. Uh, yeah, they have they've given up 18 goals, which is fine. Some teams have done that. Galaxy Chicago, done that they sit atop. Chicago, Orlando, Nashville, they've given up 17 or 18 goals, but they've only scored six. Six. One of them was last night. So five over the course of eight games. And we talked about that. Like, Rioni's not going to be the, the striker that they need, and if Carly Seal's not going to do anything. This team is punchless. D- Dylan uh, Barrero, I mean, he just, he's not played. He's been hurt. Um, I think they said Brandon Bay and now Dewan Jones are both hurt. I mean, I think it was mm-hmm. Bay was, Bay has been hurt. Dewan Jones is hurt. You know, you get rid of two of the best keepers that were in MLS with Petrovic and Matt Turner. And they thought, you know, maybe we can, we can get by. But I don't know. This team's a mess. DC beat Seattle. Talk about a mess. Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> you get to see him on Tuesday. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, hopefully. I oh, that's true, yeah. Um, so, 14 minutes in, Seattle takes the lead, and you're like, whoa. Right? And there was a lot of questions. People were like, why isn't New Who playing? Apparently, it was some sort of uh, disciplinary issue. He got the Cucho treatment. Rui Diaz was on the bench, but I think he has to start on Tuesday against the Union. So that may have been more of a more of a reason there, because the lineups were locked in because of the uh, because they had started playing. Mm-hmm. Twenty uh, eighth minute, Stefan Fry gets a red card, and that's where it kind of all falls apart here. That he really just took out <laughs> took out the DC player and uh, gets sent off. Benteke scores the penalty. And then, of course, Benteke scores in the, what was that, 45th minute? It's not letting me scroll on this app. Um, like, 45th minute, Benteke scores. Got up there. Nice header. And that was it. DC probably should have got more than two goals with the way that they were uh, up a man for so long. But this game could have went so many different ways if Fry, one of the best goalkeepers in MLS, doesn't do that. Mm-hmm. You don't give up the penalty. You stay up a man. Yep. Maybe maybe you get a draw. Maybe you get a win. Right. right? Like yeah. I mean it's kind of tough, but everything's not going their way either. They have one win on the season. That was the one that they won like five nil. Mm-hmm. Um not great, but shots were pretty even. Thirteen to twelve. Six shots on target to four for uh in DC's favor. Possession was fifty eight forty two in DC's favor. Um where's the XG at? Do we have the oh XG two point seven two to one point six one? But again, this is all with with being down a man for for Seattle. Tough, tough stretch. Uh, but DC, they they've been pretty darn okay this season, right? The ten games, thirteen points, negative one goal differential, but they've been kind of hot and cold. Mm-hmm. They're pretty even: three wins, four draws, three losses. Yeah. No, I'm getting Christian Benteke, who's you know charging down the. The golden boot. Like, there's a lot of good players, a lot of good strikers and goal scorers in this league. Um, but yeah, D, I mean, DC's sitting right, I think, like eighth, sitting right outside of the, the seventh They're spot. They're right behind Philly. Right. Yeah. So that they'd get to play in. But and, they played two more games or yeah. something. But I mean, if I'm looking at the teams below them, Jordan, I'm, I'm looking at them. And I mean, besides maybe Atlanta, I, I like what DC has. Like, I, I mean, They've, they have a tough stretch coming up too. I'm looking DC. at DC. Yeah, look at this DC Philly on May 4th. Uh in DC though. Atlanta DC on May 11th. DC Red Bulls, Inter Miami DC, and then DC Chicago. So Chicago May 25th, they yeah. have a they, they have a pretty game where they're like at this point well above Chicago. And then they go against Montreal and Toronto. So Toronto's been good. Montreal's not been what they've been in the past, but right. yeah, I mean that's a tough stretch. They again, you play the top five teams, six teams in the East. It's not going to be pretty. Um, Their league cup is tough too. Dang, yeah, they're yeah. they're Atlanta, DC, Santos, Laguna. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a tough uh, tough group to get out of. Um, but yeah, I mean, they they had lost to Orlando on the 13th. They lost to NYCFC on the 20th. Their last win before this one was against Montreal on March 30th because they drew with Columbus right. on, on the 6th. 
Um, and before that, their their last wins were their their last win was uh, opening day. Mm -hmm. So they've been getting a lot of draws in the in the middle of the season with a couple losses. They lost to Miami. That was their first loss of the season. So yeah, uh, DC very interesting team to keep an eye on here. Benteke is like near the top of the goal scoring. <laughs> One behind Messi. Yeah. Crazy. I can't believe Messi has nine goals. I can believe that. He plays like... <laughs> <laughs> I just meant like in, in the... It seems like he plays like half the games. Like, right? Like he's not played in all the... I think games. he only missed a couple. But still, it'd be like... Eight, oh, hold on. Let me see how many, go, how many games um, Messi's played. Messi, Messi, Messi. I didn't think he was in the starting lineup on the bottom of it. I was like, that's dumb. Um, he's playing seven matches. He's got nine goals. And they've played, they played 11. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, so he's missed... Seven matches, almost, nine goals, and four assists. Almost a third of their games. <laughs> <laughs> because every time he plays seriously, he gets two goals, it feels. Or, like, at least two assists. At least two assists and at least one goal in every That's match, true. I feel like, <laughs> with Messi. <laughs> uh, I mean, he has a chance of being, like, player of the match day every day he, he goes out there. That's... I think he's been every voting, at least second or first in my players when I vote. In the last couple of weeks, right. yeah. And he's, you know, he, he's he's one really... I, I mean, I guess New England's awful. But he's also, also like... There's there's a time coming up. He's probably got like four or five goals in him, right? Like, I feel like he's. Ooh, I don't know. I, I think he'll spread the wealth. Like, yeah. I, I don't. I don't think he would like. Maybe Suarez is more of that. Yeah, Suarez. Four I mean, five. he had what like th did three he have against three? Orlando. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so a lot of the other games were draws. Well, let's kind of finish with LAFC Portland before then. We just uh, you know talk about the next week coming up here. We had a. Man, this was a hell of a second half. Okay, so it's 2-0 at halftime because you have Miller own goal and then a Tillman uh, goal in the uh, stoppage time. And, uh, yeah, like they said on wrap-up and everything, if you look at the score, 2-0 LAFC over Portland at home, you're like, all right, it's over. Yeah. It's over. Well, that is the most dangerous lead in soccer as then you get a goal in the 65th and 73rd from Portland. You get a second yellow for Diego Chara, which I saw really Phil bad. Neville complained about. By the way, he said really uh, he said so MLS to like give up uh, to, to send off send him off on his record breaking game. Yeah, that, that doesn't make <laughs> any sense. It's like for me, it's like okay, stab somebody and be like, why don't you send him off? It's the record breaking game. You can't do that. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it is a weird thought process. Took out a dude's knee on purpose, almost. Though I can understand it more in like baseball, like where it's like where to throw somebody out, you just yeah. have to be a thin-skinned umpire. That's true. That'd be like Cal Ripken breaking the streak, and then him being like, "Uh, yeah, like f you ump," and he's like, yeah. "You're out of yeah, here, yeah, actually." Yeah. Like, but this was actually like a, a real foul when you're already yeah. on a yellow card and you get a second yellow. And a really dumb area, it wouldn't go on anywhere. Like I don't. Yeah, and Boanga wins it in the 90 plus second. But they did have a goal called back too in the first half, mm -hmm. which uh uh was was that offside or was it um what was that ruled out for? It was or is it a foul? Because I thought it wasn't like a good call. I, I can't remember what I what it Oh, it was handball. Yes. It was a handball. That was I mean, I get it because apparently anything under the like this part it is an arm. The ball was, yeah. But I mean, it was it was like this it's part. Very, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> there was no advantage gained like, from that. It I was don't like, think it was a little separated and it was kind of yeah. like here in the pit. Like, and, but it was like low enough in the pit where it was like, that's yeah, that's tough. I yeah, it's tough. Those are always like you know, come on. I mean, LA, by the letter of the law, right. technically it's a hand. But again, what I like to do is like, did did that actually? I don't think that actually helped them. No, at all. Or enough. Uh, but but yeah, around Spoanga scores very early, and maybe this game it's shakes out, out even of way out of yeah. reach. Yeah. Portland though, they they are sitting very low now, eleventh place, ten points after ten games played, and negative one goal differential. 
21 goals given up. They've scored a ton. Remember, yeah, they scored 20. Yeah, that's <laughs> huge. Is that the most? No, 21, no, 21 for Galaxy. The, yeah. Miami has 26. Yeah. It's it's third most. Yeah. <laughs> third most goals in the league, and they and, and they given up 21. Is that the most? No, 25 San Jose. And they've they they were also the team, Jordan, that would be like, I don't know who's gonna score for them. Well, they found it. <laughs> they just haven't found who will stop just, the goal. Yeah. <laughs> They've been a very weird case. Because, you know, if you were to tell me, after they opened up the season against Colorado winning 4-1, mm-hmm. that they were going to give up an additional 20 goals yeah. in the first 10 games, I, mean, I, I would have been like, what? Like, yeah. if you would have told me they had negative goal differential after that first game, I'd been like, whoa, that what went wrong? Yeah. Well, yeah, no, if you, if you tell anybody that, a team has scored 20 goals in, what, 10 matches. They would think they're flying high, man. Yeah. And sit 11th? They'd be like, mm, that's not possible. Like, yeah. you have to have an, an atrociously bad defense. Like, and the Chara yellow card, second yellow, does make a difference. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, like, you're down a man. Maybe LAFC still wins that game, but you fought so hard right. to get back there, and then you go down a man. So. And you got to defend in this league. Like, it is a it is a league where teams will just score in bunches if you cannot defend because of how fast paced it is. I mean, it's just three minutes after they equalize yeah. too. Like that's killer. Kai Kamara had a really good uh, header, but uh, that's what Bawanga will get the goal on uh, eventually. Like it kind of cycles back around to right. him. But Kamara is there, man. They're going to be stacked. Giroud, Kamara, Bawanga. They're good. They got to start scoring though. That, yeah. that, that's pretty good. Yeah. They're, they're going to be, again, one of the top teams in the West. Like, I feel like yeah, it's I coming. feel like we've seen a lot with, with Messi and Suarez, but, like, Olivier Giroud is a, a goal fiend, uh, and I think will play well here. What's like, your, like, ideal – is ideal MLS Cup for a casual Miami ooh, versus LAFC? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. With Giroud there yeah, against Frenchman Messi versus, and, like – You got uh, all the Frenchmen versus Messi and yeah. the South American crew. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Like, that'd the be hostility intro- be... there would be... Because <laughs> it is. It's a bunch of the French guys versus the... And if it's in Miami because maybe they have the better record? Yeah. Courtois, Moanga, Olivier Giroud. Yeah. Who else? Somebody else was coming over. One of the French defenders. Who was it? Did you say Courtois? Not Courtois. Not you mean... Courtois, uh, Lloris. Lloris. No, 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 yeah. Courtois is Belgium. Yeah. <laughs> but wasn't there... There's a French defender coming. Right? I don't know. Who am I missing? Because there was talk of, or no, it was already here. Am I blanking on somebody? I mean, they used to have uh, uh, Cellini, who was Italian. Yeah, no, he's, not, <laughs> he's not Belgian. Hold on. I gotta... Why do I feel like I'm blanking on somebody? There's a reason why he's. That'd be an that'd be an interesting MLS Cup. It's the one that the rest of MLS does not want, by the way. But I think casuals and like if you're just looking for entertainment, yes, LAFC Miami would be in Miami or in LAFC. You can't go wrong there, no. uh, depending on where that stadium is. But it would be that would be a sight to be seen. Oh, Chano. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, games coming up Tuesday. We have Philly and Seattle doing their makeup game. Their abandoned game from March. Oh man, when was that? That was a while ago. It was early on too. It was the second game of the season, pretty mm-hmm. much. I, I had went there. Uh, it got rained out. I'm seeing if my credentials still good, and then I'm also seeing if I actually feel up to it on Tuesday. Yeah. I've been exhausted after this week of all of these sporting events that we've been to. Um, so Philly, Seattle. And then you have Pachuca and Club America in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Wednesday, May 1st, we have Forge FC versus York in the Canadian Championship. Ottawa versus Valor in the Canadian Championship. Pacific FC and Rovers in the Canadian Championship. And then Monterey Columbus in the CONCACAF Champions Cup at 10.15 p.m. Thursday, May 2nd, Halifax versus CS San Laurent. Uh, that is in the Canadian Championship. Then Saturday, May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Oh, good thing. There's no afternoon games. This is I know people will be upset about that. It's good for me because my, my baby shower is in the middle of the <laughs> afternoon. So I should be able to get home and hopefully 
see some of these games. Charlotte and Portland. Uh, all right, all of these are 7:30 that I'm gonna say here. Charlotte and Portland, Atlanta, Minnesota, DC, Philly, Orlando, Cincy, Toronto, and Dallas, Miami, New York, Red Bull, San Jose, LF, LAFC. Then at 8:30 we have Nashville, Montreal, Houston, St. Louis, Chicago, New England, and then 9:30 we have RSL and Kansas City, and at 10:30 we have Vancouver and Houston. Then on Sunday, May 5th, we have NYCFC in Colorado at 4, and we have Seattle, LA at 6.45. A lot of good games. Yeah, what's your match of the week? That's tough, man. I mean, look at this. Atlanta, Minnesota, D.C., Philly, Orlando, Cincy, Miami, New York. I mean, Orlando, Cincy is probably not good anymore. Um, Vancouver, Austin. <laughs> That's LAFC. a Cincy win. I mean, LA, or sorry, LA Galaxy and Seattle are good. But, I mean, LA is good, and Seattle's a mess. I'm going to go with Vancouver, Austin. 10.30, Saturday that's, that's night. That's a good one. It's a really good one. Austin's 4 or 5 before their last five. Vancouver. Put that on, lay in bed. West. Yeah. Hunt in the top of the West. Josh Wolf got the got the boys playing well. It's in fifth. Vancouver, what, second? Wolf in. Wolf always in, baby. Uh, I'm going to probably go with, uh, am I going to be basic, Miami Red Bulls. I mean, Miami yeah. versus Red Bull is yeah. a pretty good match. Play, this is their second game. This is wild. Because they played yeah, that they, cold they game drew, when Suarez right? was about for no, they the Red Bull killed him because Messi wasn't. Playing. Oh, that's right, that's right. Because Suarez was freezing his butt off. <laughs> was like, yeah, this one's in Miami, so probably yeah. no freezing there. No, but Miami no. and New York is probably a really fun matchup there. Fireworks. Um, I'm gonna also shout out. I would say the Union DC game will be good, although there's gonna be some rotation probably with Philly. Yeah, Philly should rotate. But really, they got to beat Seattle yeah. with the way Seattle's playing. They should try to beat D.C. on the road. I say that as if they're not going to try. But, I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> that would be a pretty big deal. Yeah. Um, I know D.C. is not, like, a elite team, but they've been they've been playing pretty well, especially at home, it feels like, anyway. Um, and RSL SKC, I think, is pretty interesting. Just SKC because... will be in it. SKC will be in it, but I think RSL wins that no problem mm-hmm. again, especially at home. Is it at RSL, right? Yeah. Okay. Then, then SKC doesn't have to worry about blowing another lead at home. Yeah, yeah. Well, they didn't even have to worry about a lead this time. Well, that was in Minnesota, though, right. but yeah. Uh, yeah, and then... Oh, we didn't... Uh, the crew... What's the crew in CCC? Are they, are they Drew, right? Because they had gone up... Yeah, what was that? What was that? Because they score? were, I think they were leading and looked good, and then I think it ended up. A oh draw. no, they lead two one. Oh, is it okay? They lead two one, but that was at home, so yeah. they gave up a they gave up an away goal. That's yeah. not that's no, not great because they're going to have to at least score one down in Monterey. In yeah, I, I still think Monterey gets through there. Monterey's tough at home; like it is tough to win in Monterey. And I'm just going off history here. This is almost how it always goes for MLS clubs. They they win the home game, yeah. then they go to. Mexico and get blown out, right? Or at least lose, or lose one not one nil because they can't score, right? On the road. Right, yeah. Seen so we'll see how that goes, but I wouldn't be shocked if Monterey wins that game again. Is on, I believe, Wednesday that they're playing that one. Um, I had that on here. Yeah, Wednesday, May first. Last team left. Last MLS team left. Philly fans are really rooting for Monterey, though, because... Yeah, because if Monterey beats them, then Philly get in. Or if Monterey Club wins all of the CCC, yes, they Philly gets in the Club World Cup. It's a good, they, Monterey's been playing Not bad for team. a mid-team, I would not say. Mid, really mid. <laughs> like here. Not here. Playing the Club World Cup. All right. If they're mid, I don't want to meet the rest of them. Yes. Uh, then Open Cup again starts on May 7th, so we can kind of talk about that next week. But uh, it's back. It's back, baby. It's back. And we got some good matchups. People will be pissed it's back. Over it's there. Back. Charleston Chuck playing Chuck, a game next week in the Open Cup. They just won 6 0. Did they really? Mm-hmm. Who are they playing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw them 6 0. Uh, I think that about wraps us up. Not bad for our first in person. I don't feel like it was fun. 
podcast. Yeah, I just yeah. never knew where to look. Like, do I look at the TV? Do I look at? You? I think do we do. We're doing a good job. Like, we you do some of that, and then you do. Like, and then you do some of this. We just watched the wrap up, and they do some of this. Yeah, yeah. they do that as right. well. And at... you know what? I always podcast with this pen. I'm never writing anything down. This is like my. I always uh, wondered that. No, it's just like my. Yeah, it's, my like your, it's your cue card. It's my crutch. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's got a cue card or crutch. I've got the yeah. really loud yeti cup that i like to slap down oh yeah so if you ever hear something Warrior really cats. yeah if you ever hear something go boom in the middle of me, i try to edit that out <laughs> that's me setting down my cup i've gotten a lot better i, I put a yes you have up you have gotten a lot i better. mute it every time i go to because it makes a lot of noise too because i have ice in it so yeah i try to yeah. mute uh i got this jersey at, at, at the game yeah i got what'd you get yeah you got a hoodie oh it's downstairs he got a hoodie i did philadelphia union hoodie i well, have that uh, we were on tv we were I got that picture yeah. uh not very well they didn't it's ask just like us two how, little dots they did not ask us what we thought of the game it was kind of bad. on tv yeah yeah no, they didn't. <laughs> uh next time we'll go up to the press box and we'll we'll we'll, wave it time. we'll try to get into hey, the uh mls season pass box and uh that's funny you know try to try to Steve, get some coming for you yeah. Uh, all right. So that's that wraps us up here at Stateside Show on all of our socials. Email us at gmail.com. You can like and subscribe to us here on the YouTube channel. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Helps other people find the show. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll catch you next time uh, when we talk the games on May the 4th and 5th.